If you enjoyed this presentation, please remember to hit like and subscribe to the channel. It's late summer here in Deeside, and the River Dee is running low and clear. Typical conditions for this time of the year. Summer is the time for grills here in the River Dee, and a reasonable number have been running the river in recent days, so we're hopeful we can entice a few to our fly today. At this height, there are few pools in the Dee I'd rather fish than the bridge pool here at Lower Crathus West Durris. With the water low like it is today, the grills will be sitting high up the neck of the pool, but the fish will be aerated by the fast flow of the water and cooled in the shadows of the overhanging trees in the south bank. They will wait here until it's time for them to leave the bridge pool and run the shallow shingle bar through to riddles in the mill pool above. With the river running so clear, the contours of the pool become obvious. From the air, the numerous lies are easy to spot, as is the obvious wading line. It's easy to see why it's important to let the fly swing through to the dangle when the pool is presented like this. I've had good success in this pool in these conditions, and it's very much a case of angling the line to about 60 degrees and landing the fly in the shaded area as close to the far bank as you can. The fly will swing perfectly into the flow, and if we pick the right fly in size, we should have a good chance of a fish today. Today I'll be fishing the upper section of the bridge pool. The pool is split into an upper and lower section, and both are named pools in their own right. In summer, there are only three rods on the beat, so I fished the upper pools first, and left the bridge pool to rest till later in the afternoon. This will give any fish that might be here time to settle back into their lies after the morning rods have had a cast. The Dee is a spectacular river to fish for wild Atlantic salmon, and with Lower Crath as being one of the most prolific beats in the river, it's a joy to be out on this almost perfect day for fly fishing. I've seen a few grills splashing the neck of the pool, so I'm confident we'll see some action here today. I'm going to start fishing with the Black Micro Snelder, tied for me by Martin Ritchie at the Tay Salmon Fly Company. The grills seem to find them irresistible, so I've always got a few in my box for these conditions. I'm concentrating to get my fly as close to the far bank as I dare. The pace of the water is bringing the fly around perfectly. It's the right speed to hang the tip in the flow, so the fly will be dangling just below the surface where the salmon are hopefully lying. I cast again and I can see fish moving. The fly is definitely in the right location and it's agitating the fish. One of them is definitely going to make a grab for it. I just need to concentrate and be ready to take my chance when it comes. I'm well aware of how grills take, but I must remain focused and not snatch at it. I need to wait until I feel the weight of the fish as it turns before I weigh into it.
This fish has taken the fly only a couple of feet off the point on the opposite bank. It was exactly where fish had been consistently showing since we arrived. I haven't seen many fish moving below us, so we're definitely in the hot spot. I know there will be more fish in there, so I'm going to fight this one quite hard to keep it away from its lie and stop it spooking the others. It's a strong grills and it's twisting and turning like they always do. This is why I think a lot of the time grills are lost. My tactics is to play them hard and quick, both to stop them getting off and also to reduce the time of the fight so the fish stays healthy and ready for a quick release if we get it to the net. I'm fishing a 13 foot rod on 8 weight today. The line's a new one for me. It's an Airflow Compact Scandi shooting head. This is the first time I've used this line, so I'm happy to get a fish on it. I like the profile and it turns over very well. It's a full floater, but I've added a 10 foot floating polyleader and about 8 feet of 6 pound fluorocarbon. This is typical of a grill's rolling around the surface, but it's definitely weakening though, and it won't be long till we get it. Jordan is here with the net at the right time, and we have it. It's about four or five pounds, I think. Typical for a D grills. It's brighter than I'd expected, but definitely been in a few weeks. We were going to bring it out into deeper water to release it, but it's got plenty of energy and didn't need any encouragement to get away. I decided to change to a lighter setup. This is an 11.5 foot rod and a 7 weight. I've stuck with these Hardy Swift Mark II rods for about 15 years now, and I still rate them as one of the best rod ranges ever made. I've gotten another fish just after a couple of casts, and I say it's about the same size as the last one. I've judged the tactics right as the fish was lying in exactly the same location as the first one. The line is a second generation shooting head from Scott McKenzie. It's still a full floater and I've kept a floating polyleader. I've dropped a fly size down to a size 14 silver stoat's tail. I see that most viewers will recognise the bright red colour of the G2 line immediately. In my view it's iconic for a fly line and one of my favourite profiles. There's something so satisfying about catching salmon on tiny flies. If I'm honest, I wasn't until quite recently reluctant to go this small, but I've watched my fellow anglers do well over the years in small flies, so I'm definitely glad that I've made the change. This fish is fighting hard for its size. Interesting, this one is not looking for this lie, but heading hard to get upstream into the shallow water. I've managed somehow to put a knot in the line close to the junction with the poly tip, so I'm not going to play this fish too hard. I'd love to know how I managed to do that. I doubt I could do it again if I tried. Jordan is standing by with the net. He encourages me to take a few steps back while he readies the net. I get the fish in close, but it senses Jordan and his net, and having none of it, and heads back out to the deeper water. I feel it's weakening now, and it comes in close again but turns at the last minute. I tighten my drag and bring it round again. This time there's no escape. I think if I'm honest, I'd pick a few patterns before the stoat's tail. It must be one of the simplest flies around, 
It's a super effective pattern, I always have them in various sizes in my box. This fish is a little smaller than the last and clearly a lot darker. Compared to the bright silver fish we see in the spring, this is a remarkable change. Still though, such a beautiful fish. We'll take a quick photo for the memory and get it back to the river to continue its journey as quickly as we can. afternoon in the bridge pool here at Laura Crathis, West Durris. I ended up with three grills to the net and lost the same again, with countless knocks and offers throughout the afternoon. Catching them all in such small flies and light tackle was particularly rewarding, and I thoroughly enjoyed each one of them. In this day and age, it's not every day an angler can catch three salmon in one afternoon, so I count myself very lucky to have the opportunity to fish the bridge pool today and experience such great success. I look forward to coming back here again to fish this beautiful setting in the River Dee and hopefully entice one or two more of these special fish to my fly. Mm -hmm.